Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Tuesday, September 14th. Today we will have generally quiet winds and warm temperatures. However, we will continue to have some smoke impacts across parts of Nevada. As we move into Wednesday and Thursday, winds will start increasing over parts of Idaho and over the Sierra Front, mostly east of our large fire activity, but still we'll see an increase in winds across the north and west. Also, we'll continue to see some smoke impacts, and on Thursday, we'll likely see those, again, continued smoke impacts across Nevada, Idaho, and Wyoming. Still breezy along the Sierra front, and then winds pick up over the southern areas of the Great Basin. Temperatures will remain above normal and warm through the middle of this week, and also relative humidity will remain low. Looking at the smoke impacts near the surface this afternoon and tomorrow, you can see generally mainly across Nevada today and possibly increasing across parts of Idaho by tomorrow. Similar conditions at the 6,000 foot level. Looking at our precipitation and lightning over the last 24 hours, we did have some lightning in the Uinta Mountains yesterday and brought some light precipitation to some of those higher elevation areas, otherwise dry conditions across the rest of the Great Basin. Great Basin fire activity was light with just some smaller fires reported across parts of Idaho, Utah, and Nevada, and we still have our large fire activity in northern Utah and up into Idaho. Over the last seven days, we've had some precipitation over parts of northern Nevada into Idaho and parts of Utah, especially in the higher terrain, and over the last 14 days, some of this precipitation was above normal, also some above normal precipitation in the far south, but still some of our drier areas remain western and central Nevada down into southern Nevada and over parts of central and eastern Idaho. Looking at our ERC conditions, with the warmer and drier conditions, ERCs continue to rise across Idaho and are above the 80th percentile in the central mountains. Also, ERCs continue to increase over parts of western and northern Nevada but still remain below the 70th percentile. Across Utah, ERCs are rising, however, again, still remain Mostly non-critical in most areas, but we are seeing some new smaller fires reported as some areas dry out. Looking at some of our ERC charts, you can see across Idaho, ERCs are still above normal, and over parts of the Sierra Front, ERCs again are above normal. Looking at our satellite picture from this morning, you can see a trough of low pressure well to our east, and we're kind of in between systems right now, so we will see again those lighter winds, high pressure dominating continuing our warm temperatures and dry conditions across the Great Basin. Our weather pattern for later today again shows those warm and dry conditions. We have no high risk across the Great Basin with those winds decreasing and no lightning expected. You can see the drier spots obviously are southern and western areas of the Great Basin and also into parts of Idaho. Relative to humidity today will remain in the single digits to teens in many areas. Some of our higher elevations in Utah, Wyoming, and Idaho will be a little bit higher but winds will be light generally area-wide. As we move into Wednesday, we will see a trough of low pressure moving into the Pacific Northwest. This will increase our winds in parts of central and eastern Idaho into Wyoming and also along the Sierra Front. So some of these areas that certainly have been drier, as these winds pick up, we could see increased fire activity or increased fire behavior on, on our existing incidents. Relative humidity will drop into the single digits across much of Nevada and into the teens across many other areas of the Great Basin. And you can see where these lower relative humidities line up with some of the gustier winds along the Sierra Front and also over central and eastern Idaho. Relative humidity will remain in the teens in many of these areas. As we move into Thursday, that trough swings by to the east. We will see the winds increase a little bit further south over the southern areas of the Great Basin. So some of our drier areas where these winds pick up, where we have seen some newer fire starts recently, we could see some increased fire potential in some of those areas. Otherwise, dry conditions will continue with single digits to teens, relative humidity, and some areas increasing to above 20% over parts of western Wyoming into eastern Idaho. You can see from the wind gusts on Thursday, the strongest winds, again, located over the southern and eastern areas of the Great Basin, where these winds will be gusting in the 20s and 30s, with some areas approaching 40 miles per hour. Winds will still remain breezy across Idaho and the Sierra Front, but not quite as strong as what we will see on Wednesday. No precipitation or thunderstorms are expected across the Great Basin over the next few days. As we go into Friday into the weekend, conditions will be changing across the Great Basin as a stronger cold front drops in from the north. So we will see winds increasing on Friday ahead of this cold front 
over parts of western and central areas of the Great Basin and over parts of Idaho. So some of our drier areas as these winds increase with low relative humidity will see increased fire potential. As we move into Saturday, that's when the cold front drops into the north. So we will see temperatures decreasing as the cold front approaches, but a stronger temperature decrease behind the cold front. And also precipitation will be moving into northern areas on Saturday. So we will see that fire potential decrease across central Idaho where we have some of our larger fires. The best chances of wetting rains for the weekend will be across Idaho and Wyoming, but that precipitation could dip down into northern Nevada. However, on Saturday, we'll still see those gusty winds and dry conditions increasing fire potential over western and northern Nevada, also over parts of Utah, and possibly even into eastern Nevada. As we move into Sunday, the cold front continues to swing by to the east. Again, we'll see a decrease in fire potential over much of Idaho, Wyoming, and even into parts of northern Nevada and Utah, where that precipitation will be more concentrated. We could see the precipitation drop as far south as parts of northern areas of the Sierra Front, but the southern half of the Great Basin will remain dry. We also could see some wind concerns continue over parts of southern Utah and the Arizona Strip on Sunday as that cold front moves through, but we'll continue to look at that as we get closer to the weekend. On Monday, the cold front continues moving off to the east, so we will start to see a decrease in precipitation, but cooler temperatures across the Great Basin. So our change in temperatures from Saturday through Monday are indicated here. You can see temperatures will be cooling as we approach Friday and Saturday, but we'll see that more significant cooling as we go through Sunday and Monday, especially across Idaho and Wyoming, where highs will drop from the 70s and 60s down into the 50s in the higher elevations and the 60s in the lower elevations. We'll also see those temperatures decrease across Nevada and Utah, dropping from the upper 80s that we're seeing today to the low 80s and then eventually low 70s as we approach Sunday and Monday. Seven day total precip is shown here. So again, with that cold front, we'll see the better chances of wetting rains over parts of central Idaho and into Wyoming, but also over parts of southern Idaho, we will see some rainfall as well. And that could drop down into northern Nevada and possibly far northern areas of the Sierra front. The 8 to 14 day outlook, taking us from September 21st through the 27th, shows cooler and drier conditions across the Great Basin. But with these cooler temperatures, it'll, it is the likelihood of those cold fronts bringing those cooler temperatures. So we will certainly see chances for windy conditions continuing through the end of September. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.